the ALCS and the situation that the Yankees find themselves in now, paying the piper for a philosophical decision they made as an organization three years ago, and it is still coming back to potentially haunt them in the postseason. The narrative for the Yankees all season was analytics, bullpen, and our big bopper of a lineup, and we're going to prove to you that we don't need these frontline horse starters to beat teams in the playoffs. They got out of round one doing that, but now they have run into the exact roadblock that you knew was going to be eventually waiting for them in the ALCS. And it's funny because this season, if you look at this season alone in a silo for the Yankees, the criticism they took of not getting a horse of a starter at this year's trade deadline was probably unfounded because who are they going to get? Matt, Madison Bumgarner didn't change teams. Noah Syndergaard didn't change teams. Marcus Stroman might have been the best starter available at the trade deadline this year. He went to the Mets, right? Greinke was never coming to New York. He goes to Houston. He was never going to be a Yankee. He was never going to come to New York. So there was no opportunity for the Yankees to get a game-changing, franchise-changing, front-of-the-rotation horse of a starter this year. So when you look at where the Yanks are right now, down 2-1, and I think hurt by the rain out because their bullpen is now going to be called upon four days in a row, and one of those starts is going to be by their bullpen. That's a big problem for them. They're going to need length out of their starters in a way they have not gotten from anyone other than Tanaka to make sure that their bullpen's got some gas in the tank when they face Verlander and Cole if they can get this thing back to Houston. But we'll get to how the, you know, the, the rotations set up in just a second. I'm looking at this more wide-angle lens, and that is pinstriped glasses. Way of looking at their situation this season was, who are they going to get? Madison Bumgarner stayed in, uh, in San Francisco, right? Any other, like Trevor Bauer, um, you know, there are a couple other guys' names that got thrown out there, but nobody really game-changing. Noah Syndergaard didn't get traded. I don't think anybody's going to confuse Marcus Stroman with Zach Greinke or Jay, uh, Justin Verlander or Garrett Cole. So if you were not going to get a rotation-changing difference maker, then what were you going to do this year? And there's no question in the silo of this season, that's true. But where they find themselves right now, they're not getting beat by guys that got traded this year. They're getting beat right now by guys that they didn't go after two and three years ago. The Yankees have made a bed that they are now lying in that began, they made this bed three years ago. For the last three years, what you have seen them, they made an organizational philosophical decision to approach things as we don't have to go overboard to pay a free agent starter. We don't have to give up our organizational gems to get a starter that's got years of control left. We don't have to make a trade for Verlander. We don't have to make a trade for Cole. We don't have to offer the Mets the sun, the moon, and the stars for Jacob DeGrom. We don't have to do that. We've got this powerful lineup. We've got the baby bombers. We've got analytics. We've got our bullpen. We can do it that way. So they have gone after, rather than the big-time names, they've either underbid for guys like Corbin and Keuchel, or they haven't been willing to give up the cost to go get the other guys. What they've done is they've gotten the Jay Haps and the Paxtons and the Lance Lins of the world, rather than going after the difference maker. And right now, they're getting beat by the team that went after the difference makers. Now, could they still win this series? Of course they could still win this series. Tanaka, tomorrow, on full rest, could come out and blank the Astros. This thing could be 2-2. The Yankees could find a way maybe to patch it together with their bullpen in a start on Friday. They've got to win, I think, the next two games. You can't go back to Houston thinking you're going to beat Verlander and Cole, both in Houston, down by a game. You're going to be up a game and force the Astros to win 6-7. and seven. So could they pull that off? Yeah, they could pull that off. But who's picking them to do that right now? Nobody. And it's funny, the philosophical decision as an organization that they made was we don't need the big horse top of the rotation starters. We can do this a different way. Well, look at the team from the National League that is now in the World Series. How'd they get there? They've got the best starting pitching in the National League. And they leaned on that starting pitching 
coming out of their bullpen to get them to the World Series. How right now would you handicap the ALCS? Which team would you make the favorite? Up 2-1 with Verlander and Cole still sitting there. You'd make the Houston Astros the favorite to win the ALCS. What's their calling card? Great starting pitching. The guys the Yankees weren't willing to go get when they were available. They wouldn't pay the price. When Garrett Cole was on the block a couple of years ago, the Houston Astros were willing to pony up. The Yankees wouldn't give up Clint Frazier and Miguel Andujar. So they have, they've almost, the pendulum with the Yankees has almost swung completely in the opposite direction now. When George Steinbrenner was running things, they were known as the team, certainly back in the 80s, that would throw as many prospects out there to get the hot name, and you would see guys come back and haunt them years later, and you'd be sitting there saying, oh my God, what could they have been had they hung on to all of these guys? Well, now it's almost like they're not willing to give up any of these guys in certain spots to go up and make the big trade. They're not giving up any of the top of the organization talent to go get the Garrett Coles or the DeGroms or the Syndergaards. And it's almost like the pendulum has swung so far in the opposite direction. They've got guys that didn't even have a place to play on their team that they're unwilling to give up like a Clint Frazier a couple of years ago. Just wouldn't give him up. Got to give up talent to get talent. And they have bypassed those trades. And now they're paying for it. And it's funny because right now you've got the Yankees down 2-1 in a series where it's all about we don't need dominant starting pitching. We'll win with our analytics and our big-time lineup and our bullpen and let the other team have the dominant starting pitching and we'll find a way to beat it. Think about the only game the Yankees have won of the three so far against the Astros in this ALCS. And why did they win it? Starting pitching. They won it because their starter was just flat out better than the guy he was pitching against. Tanaka. Tanaka is the one guy in the postseason for the Yankees that looks like these other guys. That looks like the kind of guy you would have given up the sun, the moon, and the stars to go get if you knew he was going to put up a performance like this in the postseason. So the exact philosophical organizational way that they have approached this over the past three years that I think right now they're paying for, the opposite was true in the one game they won, which was they sent their horse of a starter out there, their new El Duque, their unbelievably clutch 1-2 ERA in the postseason ace in in Tanaka, and he got the job done. Have they won either of these other two games where it's been about a starter barely eking his way into the fourth inning and analytically bullpenning it the rest of the way, counting on their big bats? No. And go back two years ago. What was the story? What's been the story in this ALCS? One big starter in Tanaka got the job done. Other than that, the Yankees' bats have gone quiet against really, really good starting pitching. That is the exact same thing that happened to them against this team two years ago. Two years ago, they had Aaron Judge hitting 50 home runs as a rookie. This unbelievable baby bomber young lineup that was a year ahead of schedule with Joe Girardi as the manager. And in the ALCS, they were down in Houston just looking for some hits against the Verlanders and Charlie Mortons and Keichels of the world. And they couldn't get them. Did they learn their lesson? No. Then? No. They really didn't approach anything differently after 2017 to 2018, and they have not approached anything materially differently from 2018 to 2019. Their big acquisitions have been the Giancarlo Stantons, the Edwin Encarnaciones of the world. They're bringing in the big slugging home run hitters to stick in the lineup with other big slugging home run hitters, thinking if we can just score enough runs to get our starter into the fourth inning, we'll get it with analytics and bullpen the rest of the way, and we'll figure it out. And that is a great way to win a billion games in the regular season. Two years ago, they were way ahead of schedule. Last year, they were a 100-win team. This year, they won 107 games. And yet, what did they keep running into? Two years ago, couldn't get big hits against dominant starting pitching in Houston. 
Last year, at the deadline, they trade for Jay Happ and Lance Lynn. Neither guy turns out to be a difference maker where it really counts. Lance Lynn is a bullpen guy at the end of the season, and Jay Happ in his one really, truly in-the-spotlight meaningful start in Boston goes out and just gets lit up by the Red Sox, and the Yankees are done, and the Red Sox move on. This year, what are they looking at? A roadblock of starting pitching. By a team that went out and got a number one starter in Garrett Cole that the Yankees could have had if they wanted to pay the price a couple of years ago. A number two starter, really a 1A in Justin Verlander. That the I mean, nobody really, when Verlander was out there, was willing to pony up. Everybody thought he was done. But what are the Astros? What, what's been the Astros tact? The Astros tact has been give us those starting pitchers. Get them in our building. Get them with our people. Get them with our pitching coach. Get them in our program. We will unlock them. We will take these guys, a guy that in Detroit you thought was done, a guy that everybody in, in Pittsburgh thought might have been a 2015 flash in the pan, certainly had promise, could be a good, solid starting pitcher, but nobody saw this coming. You know who saw this coming? The Astros. When the Yankees wouldn't give up Andujar and Frazier for Garrett Cole, you know what the Astros did? Give him to us. We will take him. We will find the 2015 Garrett Cole, and we'll get him back in the Cy Young conversation. We can do that. We're good enough. We know what we're doing with these guys. We can get it done. And what did they do? They absolutely backed up everything that they said they were going to do with both guys. And now they might be on the verge of winning their second World Series in three years because they've got these guys at the top of the rotation. Now, look, every team's got analytics. Every team makes at least some decisions based on analytics and at least some decisions based on matchups in their bullpen. Even the horse starter teams with the Coles, the Verlanders, don't think those guys are going to go out there and throw nine innings. So they all have at least some version of this baked into what they do. But the Yankees have made this, at least to a certain extent, like all about what they do. It's all about the bullpen. It's all about analytics. It's all about, let's just, we, if we can get a starter through the second time in the order, just get him through the fourth inning, we can figure it out matchups-wise after that. And in the regular season, oftentimes over the wide-angle lens, yes, you can do that. But in a, in a condensed series, who would you rather have? The Yankee bullpen or Garrett Cole? I think you got your answer last night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.